since Thomas Partey has come back into the side, he has been absolutely incredible. Playing so, so well in that midfield with Rice in front of him and Odegaard in front of him. It's felt like we've had a lot more control and composure in the midfield. And Thomas Partey just keeps showing that he has what it takes to be in this side. And it's not been a question of whether he's good enough. But it's been a question of whether he is available and able to play games for us without being injured. And this season, it's unfortunate that he's only been really available for this run-in. Because I'm sure he would have helped in the other games. But today I'm just going to go through the world class aspects of his game. And I'm going to start firstly with his press resistance. I think Thomas Partey is one of the best players in our squad with evading the press. You see in a couple of the clips from the seasons prior, but also maybe some from this season, where Thomas Partey has just glided past players using his close control or just done a little Cruyff turn to get away from a pressing player. And this is critical for a side like Arsenal, where we have a lot of the ball. We're going to need a lot of bravery to break the lines of stubborn defensives. Especially against Spurs, there was just a time where he absolutely spun James Madison, playing a beautiful ball out wide to Bukayo Saka. And this is what exactly you get from Thomas Partey. Somebody that's not afraid to make a turn and then make a tricky pass. And we need those players in the midfield willing to take risks. And a lot of people slander Partey saying he loses the ball a lot and we need him to have a lot more composure. But it's all about risk versus reward. And I think more times he completes the skill and finds Bukayo Saka or whoever is in the midfield. I think Thomas Partey's performance against Chelsea has been his best game since he's returned to the side. And these stats just show that. Here he is, fouled twice, one clearance, three interceptions, one tackle, 72 minutes played, 56 touches, 86% pass accuracy, two key passes as well and blocking three shots. So it was a top performance from Partey all round, what you would want from your midfielder. Showing again that he can make the risky passes with those two key passes, creating some nice opportunities, but then also he is defensively solid. And he gives Rice that license and Odegaard that license to go and press. They haven't got to worry about who's behind them. Because the thing you get with Partey is he's a lot more athletic. So it means Declan Rice and Odegaard can go about their game a lot more without thinking about Jorginho behind them, who although is world class on the ball, can get overrun in the midfield. Even against Spurs the other day, Thomas Partey had impressive stats. 55 touches, 3 out of 4 long balls completed successfully, 5 out of the 11 duels, 1, 1 clearance, 2 tackles, 1 interception and 1 block shot. Obviously, we were a lot more compact and in shape, so it meant that Thomas Partey had a lot of opportunities to win the ball back. Arteta really drilled us well against Spurs, but what was impressive is that 93% pass accuracy because more often than not when we won the ball back and it came to Partey he was really really composed and was able to find the other midfielders or a ball into Kai Havertz. There was only this one instance at the edge of our box where he was caught into a possession but the team got back really really quickly and that's what you love to see. His error went unharmed and that's what again you get with Thomas Partey risk and reward you maybe have to bank on one of those going wrong in a game but the times it goes right he creates a chance every single time he really is a unique footballer and I don't think there's many players on the market that could replace him and there's a lot of talk about Arsenal dipping into the market finding a midfielder that can replace Partey but have more availability and I do think the market is dry. You've got the likes of Amadou Onana, possibly at Everton. But he himself isn't playing as much for Son Dice's team. So it's a question of whether he would be ready to make that step up to Arsenal if he can't even get into the Everton side. So Gunners, I'll ask you, if you're watching this video, let me know. Would you sell Thomas Partey at the end of the season, considering his availability and the fact we just need somebody who's going to play those matches where we have to be a bit more defensively solid because Declan Rice and Jorginho, although it's been successful more times than it hasn't, it just doesn't feel as balanced as when somebody with the profile of Thomas Partey is in that number six role. Or is it a question of actually getting somebody to play in that left eight position and then putting Declan Rice where Partey is? 
I don't know, if you're Arteta, what would you do? Anyway, let's go to that Tottenham performance and look at it in depth. So here, Thomas Partey is collecting the ball from a Tottenham header out of their own box. And this is what he gives ahead of Jorginho. He's there to pounce. And it feels like he's more aware of how to pick the ball up from our attacking areas. There was multiple instances where you felt Thomas Partey was ready to pounce. And he was always in and around the Spurs box when we were attacking. And this is what Arteta wants. He wants to completely suffocate his opponent. And against Spurs, although we didn't do that over sustained periods of time, you could see what the game plan was. And Thomas Partey was a massive, massive help to it. Also, it was in our defensive third where Thomas Partey would eat a lot of yards. And I said previously in the video, Thomas Partey ahead of Jorginho has that athleticism. And there was times where Ben White and Saka would get dragged out to Brennan Johnson, leaving a gap in behind. But Thomas Partey, as shown in this image, follows Benton Court into the space and shields him out for a goal kick. And it's the small things like this which may go a bit unnoticed in games, which are crucial. Again, here in this image, Thomas Partey again travels from where Declan Rice is to go and tackle King Min Son. And this was crucial. Look at the gap in between Saliba and Gabriel. They have been split. So having Thomas Partey there, recognising the threat, recognising the danger, using his long legs to retrieve the ball, prevented a potential goal. We know how good Son is one on one. So it was really crucial Thomas Partey did this over the duration of the match. I talked about Thomas Partey's long balls and it was really impressive against Spurs. Here, two Spurs players try and press him, but he has the awareness to spot a run from deep from Martin Odegaard. And this is what we get from Thomas Partey. He's not afraid to play the ball over the top, take the risk and create an opportunity. And on the other hand, if the Spurs players had won the ball back, we would have been in trouble. But this was successful. Odegaard was in on goal and a chance to go and score. Such a unique footballer and it's been really nice to see him play for Arsenal and it's a shame he's been injured for such long periods of time and we haven't really been able to enjoy him. And it is such a shame because he was one of the first big stars to make the jump and trust Arteta's project. And I'll never forget him for that in a time where we were poor. Thomas Partey trusted Mikel and trusted what he had to offer. And he did give us some really nice moments in his time. But in terms of what we achieved in his time at the club, it wasn't enough. And it's, and it's only now really where Thomas Partey can feel the Arteta project and see what Arteta wanted. But anyway, that's it for now, Gunners. Thomas Partey is obviously world class and is showing that for us now that he's back and fit. Hopefully his performance can take us over the line and lift up that Premier League to potentially end what has been a really up and down Arsenal career for him. So without further ado, see you guys later.